Hey aviators, my name is Chris Palmer, a master CFI here at angleofattack.com, the flight school that I have founded here in Homer, Alaska. As you can see, an airplane behind me, that means flight school. So today we're back for another real life flight lesson with a student pilot. Sienna is back for her fourth flight lesson. We've got some wind and turbulence to deal with today, which makes things real interesting. And Sienna and I will eventually get into things like stalls and slow flight as well focusing on those fundamentals in the very beginning of her training. Plenty to go over, so let's get right at it. Okay, welcome to this lesson. On the last flight, we flew with Sienna's dad around the mountains, putting the basics to the test in a great scenic environment here in our hometown in Alaska. Now we're back for a crammed lesson of new and fundamental concepts. Mostly we're going over things again, really making sure that we drive those things home. But this time the weather isn't perfect and we have some weird winds and things going on. So just some little twists to what we've learned before. We'll see if Sienna gets sick or powers through. We'll see how that goes. She's pretty tough. And we'll also get into stalls and other things along the way. So there's lots to cover here and it should be a great lesson. So now we are going to jump in the airplane where I have cameras rigged throughout, ATC and cockpit audio hooked up, and you get to be a fly on the cockpit wall as we go through her fourth lesson. So we'll even break it up into meaningful chunks and chapters for you. So let's go, let's jump right in the airplane. And I like to yell clear. It, there's actually a really good reason. I was reading a story last night. Someone asked, oh, has clear prop ever done anything for you? And this guy's like, yeah, I yelled clear the other day and this guy stood up from right under my propeller. He was a guy like about to tow my plane and thought it was another plane he had to tow. So it's, there's a good reason for it. lining up I haven't touched the pedals at all there you go we'll get her nice and straight before you start and move your heels to the floor okay all right there will be right rudder pressure I'll try to help you or if I need to help you I will but that's a new wrinkle vamos hey you feel that see that right Rudder you need to put in a little bit. Good. Okay, left hand on the yoke. Airspeed's alive, engine's green. Good job. You feel that little rudder? Yeah. Okay, now you're ready to lift off. Keep that rudder in as you lift off. Peel her back. Ooh, a little bit more. Yeah. That was good. You just need to keep that pressure in so we didn't whip you do back down. But that was good. I like I like seeing you use that rudder. Makes it a little more complicated, huh? A little more going on than your first takeoff, but I'm helping a little bit. But I, I actually just kind of like gave that to you. I didn't really help you at all. They're doing good. So obviously we can't do our normal, just nice turns and it does everything. You're having to fight for it a little bit. You get air sick, you know? You don't? Okay. No. Just making sure. And if you do, that's fine. Just let me know there are things we can do. Like come back or... Uh, I took a, the ferry to Kodiak uh, with the track team and everyone else was like throwing up and I was okay. just like sitting there. Yeah, seasickness can be different than air sickness yeah. too. Like I get seasick, but I don't get air sick. Actually, I won't say I don't get airsick. I, I can get airsick. Definitely taking, it's like more active flying today, you know, where you're having to stay on it a little bit more. This is where it's not so much fingertip flying, where you're a little bit more like full palm. Good experience for you to have. To know that the air isn't always absolutely perfect. And actually a good exercise because the, the wind will push you 
every which way like your heading just changed so to maintain your heading like you got to use the rudder too and it's actually good for your feet right now okay so we're coming up on 2500 we'll probably climb up to three and this wind is wonky up here so this tells us our wind we have a 30 knot crosswind and a 17 knot tailwind so it's coming behind us from right here yeah, we'll go up to 3,000, see what happens. It's definitely like went smooth, a little more smooth there. Okay, so about 50 feet before our cruise altitude is when we'll start to level off. So that's where we set the attitude first and hold it there while we retrim and everything. So here you go. So go ahead and gently push forward until you get that picture you remember out front. Right there, okay, now you can reach down and retrim. Which way am I? Whatever your whatever takes the pressure off. So yep, go forward. That's good. So can you let go and it looks pretty good? Yeah, I think it may be slightly more nose down. And we are in a serious wind. Let's turn that way. Good, good, and you'll work on your altitude. So let's work on keeping 3,000 to pull your power back. Okay, that looks good. Curious what our ground speed is. More traffic, super cruise rate, zero mic, down clear. 32 line. knots. Wow. But it's like, it's really windy, but it's also smooth, you know? At least here. It was bumpy down there. That but was weird. Yeah. Weird that there's a the different layers. That was weird how the wind was over there. Yeah. Wind in aviation, in the air, whatever, it definitely happens in layers like that. And it's, it's not uncommon to have it be like relatively calm on the ground, which it was. There's a little bit of wind out from this way. But then for there to be what's called a wind shear. So wind shear is literally the definition is the boundary between two different like speeds. So then that means it's churning in there, right? Like the eddy in a pool. So, um, kind of doing what we usually do, let's start to do some turns and just coordinate some turns and look around and see what we can see. So now that the wind is at our back, you can kind of see it there with the airplane behind. We're going 125, oh, 123 across the ground. So unlike a car, where your speed is constant, when you're in the air, you're moving with the air. So since the air is all moving that way right now, and we're moving with it, that means we're going across the ground even faster. It's like we get a bonus. Okay, so there's 112 right now. Let's turn back the other direction. Let's watch what happens when we land, or when we're flying that way. Okay, watch this number go down. There's 80, 78, 76, 70. Is this line like the wind? Uh, no, that's our heading. Oh. Oh, yeah. This will, if, When this is straight up and down, oops. When that's straight up and down, we're headed straight into it. So oh. go ahead and roll out your heading. Look, we're going only 63 now. So half the speed we were going before. That's pretty nuts. I think that's nuts. So this is a little bit of a mulligan for our lesson, but this is why we land into the wind. Because it helps us land at a slower speed, right? To like over the ground. It's also the reason why you don't take off with a tailwind. You know, obviously the wind kind of just helps you get lift on the ground. But if you take off with a tailwind, you're not going to get airborne. It's just gonna, you're just going to be hauling butt down the runway. And you might run out of runway. So there are good reasons to do that. Are you enjoying this video and want to learn more? We have an entire library of structured videos on angleofattack.com. We call this online ground school and it's how you'll ace the written test required by the FAA. It's go at your own pace and all accessible right now on any device. Go check it out yourself or recommend it to your friends. Now back to the video. Now we're in a good, good position to show you what it's like if you are doing a landing and you don't compensate for, say, 
like power and you just pull up. So we're gonna do a stall. So we'll do what's called a power off approach to landing stall. We'll do it straight into the wind here. So once we bring the nose up to the horizon, it's just gonna shudder a little bit, but I want you to feel what that feels like. And the only thing we need to do, even if we didn't add power, which the whole point of this maneuver is to show you how to get out of a stall, but the only thing we need to do is reduce our angle of attack, which is indicated here, but basically it's us releasing our pressure to get the wing flying again, okay? So I'll help you set up for it. We're just going to set up in a normal descent. Just slowly bring back the power. The airplane naturally wants to start to descend. And now I'm at power idle. I'm going to get the trim to where it's just very stable. Okay, so this is a normal approach. We're descending three, between 300 and 500 feet per minute. We're approaching the runway. Of course, here we can't see the runway like coming up to us, but we would be seeing that closure come with the ground. And say that as a pilot, like, we stopped paying attention or something and we started pulling up for whatever reason. Well, what happens when our airspeed gets too slow or our angle of attack gets too high? Hear the airplane make a noise. I can hear this make a noise. I'm holding pressure here. Okay, here comes the shutter. Hear that whistle? Yeah. And you feel that? Yeah. That's a stall. You see how I just reduced the angle of attack? It's flying again. Now near the ground, we don't have all that opportunity to just, oh, let's just dive down. So then we do what's called a go around. We power up, pitch up. So I'm climbing again, right? And clean up. So now I'm climbing. Imagine the ground, like we're slowly separating from the ground now. And I'm climbing out at a safe airspeed. Now some extra stuff can happen. Say someone screws up and they do something like that. We're going to discuss this a lot more on the ground. Someone screws up and they um, they panic. Okay, now you can get into a takeoff departure stall where you get the nose too high. Say the trees, you have some trees coming towards you and you start to freak out a little bit. That's where a power off or on stall comes, which is a lot different. I'm actually at an okay altitude. I'm going to show you that one. So now we have the propeller pulling us, we have lots of power. You can feel that shutter too. Now this one you already have all the power in, so you just need to get the wing flying again. I delayed a lot in that, but just to show you the distinct steps. And now we're flying again and climbing at a normal speed, like 80. Or even 65 is okay. So you're really not going to hurt the airplane if you're flying out at this speed right here. It's actually an acceptable speed. So I know that's a lot of talky talky. This would be a good one to like review the video and understand like those steps and kind of what I'm saying. So a lot of what we're learning r with right now in maintaining like good airspeed and, and attitudes and everything is to make sure that when we get in the pattern and start to do your landings, that we're not doing anything crazy enough to get the, the pitch to look like that, to get the airplane to be shuddering like that or acting like that. Okay, really good lesson right now. So this is, it, this is good because we can distinctly see the spit, okay? We have that crosswind from the right. Can you see how it's pushing us? Yeah. So if we just maintain this heading only, we're going to end up out there. Yeah. So now we, we do what's called crabbing into the wind. So you'll fly into the wind a little bit to counteract that until we're flying that way, basically. So yeah, give that a shot. It's going to be pretty dramatic in this case. This landing, I think the one thing I want to point out, because I'll probably end up doing a lot of it, unfortunately, is it's going to take more to get it down. It's going to take me using power, me turning more. It's definitely going to be more active, okay? 
but now we can level off mostly power settings okay we're gonna speed will get below in the white you see how it's white there and white here so that means we can start to add flaps and I'll turn a little bit of a downwind here Homer traffic two three in a form uh, right downwind runway four Homer now when you're flying with the wind you want to work with it if you can rather than against it right so right now I'm letting it kind of push me this way I have a very shallow bank so it's pushing me out to sea when I turn back in I'm going to have to turn sharper to get there. I'm going to start the turn now, because it's going to be working against me. Homer traffic, two through uniform, right base, runway four, Homer. And then the wind kind of holds you back from making progress, so sometimes you have to carry a little bit more power. It goes a little bit more slow. You see how weird that feels? It doesn't feel like we're making as good of progress. The wind isn't as strong as it was out where we were, but... So now I try to draw a line here with my ground track, you see that? I'm trying to keep in mind I'm creating a square. Homer traffic, 2-3 and a 4, I'm turning final, runway 4. You can look below us for airplanes, you see anyone? Oh, that would be landing, okay. Short final runway zero four. A good chance to look at the windsock. There's usually windsocks near where you're landing. Just get one last look at where it's coming from because then you can know what direction to turn into the wind. So I'm going to get as stabilized as I can. But again, it's not that bad, but you can tell it takes a little bit more work to stay on track. Now my power is idle. I'm pulling back and holding it off. It actually helps to turn this into the wind too. That's it. Is that exciting? That's kind of exciting. Different wind. Yeah. It you was get... weird when we like first turned off on the spit. Yeah. And it was a lot higher. It died down the the lower we got, right? So next lesson or two really depending on a wind, but I'd actually like to get in the pattern a few laps and like start to let you learn the land, you know? Let you feel what that's like. Uh, start to let you feel the end there where you're you're bleeding off. Radio, Razor, two five, six rock, Juliet, for four. All right, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I really enjoy teaching the beginning concepts because I feel like so many pilots are shortchanged with these basic skills of just how an airplane flies getting comfortable with stalls, the energy state of the airplane and the wing. And so there's just so much to learn here. So what did you learn or what were you reminded of in your training? I'd love to hear what stood out for you in the comments. So go ahead and comment below and continue the discussion. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. I hope you did. If you stuck around this long, you probably did. Subscribe to get more flight training content here at Angle of Attack and hit all notifications so you don't miss anything. Thanks for coming along, fly safe, and until next time, throttle on.